No, it's, it's so true. And Brooklyn is almost the poster child of some of this fraud when you look at the numbers and the amount of dollars. And sometimes people say, well, what does it have to do with me? Uh, this is not an endless flow of cash. As we have a conversation around health care, the cost of health care, what's driving up this cost also is the various forms of fraudulent activity. We want to turn everyday patients into the identifiers of the fraud and show them how to properly report it. Ah, good, 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 good. You know, uh, thank you, thank you all so much for coming together. This is such an important initiative and we want to really acknowledge our partners, uh, Brooklyn uh, Citywide Interagency Council on Aging Direct Director uh, Maria Alvarez. Maria has been really a partner on uh, senior issues for the years that I've been in Borough Hall and even longer, and we cannot thank her enough uh, for just being really committed and dedicated to this conversation. Uh, <laughs> Administration for Community Living, Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services, of the Federal Bureau of Investigation, New York City Department for the Aging, and New York Statewide Senior Action Council. Um, all of these organizations, uh, uh, along with the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services Office of Inspector General, uh, Gene Stone, retiree and patrol volunteer who's here with us, uh, Safeguard Services, uh, Susan Fox, Executive Director of Shorefront Wise Senior Center. Su Susan is, you don't get a better advocate, and we cannot thank her uh, enough. Uh, the Mayor's Office of Immigrant Affairs, uh, so important for the Mayor's Office of Immigrant Affairs because when you think about uh, some of the individuals who are the victims of this type of fraud, they are from the English is a second language community, like the Russian-speaking community uh, that's here in the Brighton Beach area, as well as other uh, members and community residents who are English is a second language. So today, we're here at the, in Brighton Beach to launch a critically important initiative across the borough, a borough-wide patrol to combat more than uh, $600 million annually in Medicaid fraud uh, in Brooklyn. Think about that number, $600 million um, that you see annually that is being siphoned off from our healthcare services because of fraudulent means. And law enforcement agencies and entities cannot be everywhere all the time, but with the partnership of everyday residents performing this a uh, form of cyber patrol where you are on the watch to determine when someone is illegally taking actions against our healthcare city, our centers, et cetera. Kings County is the county where taxpayers, we lose the most, right here in the borough of Brooklyn. Uh, out of all New Yorkers, according to the estimates from the FBI, the most money is lost here in the borough of Brooklyn. The FBI also published uh, data in 2010, which found that the fraudulent activities have included the one, the use of stolen Medicaid numbers, Medicare numbers, uh, lying about elig eligibility to providers, billing for services never provided or received. You have we have those who are providing services, and they are forcibly given claims of services that were never provided or that the persons involved never received. Uh, dispensing generic drugs billed at name brand prices. The name brand prices are different from the generic drugs and there are individuals who are stating that the pre prescriptions that were written were written for the name brand, brand drugs and not the generic drugs. So there's a, a, a illegal charging of the the name brand prices. And this, is, this issue of this fraud is really hitting close to homes. Two months ago, in the Midwood section, the CEO of the Midwood Clinic uh, was indicted by the Office of the New York State Attorney General for an estimated $11 million in embezzlement. So we're talking about real money. If one location 
was indicted for $11 million in embezzlement. Uh, this is serious money that we're finding that is really being siphoned off of our health care system. And, th and that is why it's crucial uh, that when you look at here in Brighton Beach in particular, we see a high incident rate of Medicare and Medicaid fraud right here in Brighton Beach, where we have a large senior population, and it appears as those those who are actually involved in this illegal activity is really focusing on what we have, our senior population. So it's crucial that we educate the public, particularly our seniors, about the dangers of fraud, how to detect it, and how to report it. Identify the problem, how you can properly detect it, and how do you properly report it. That is so important. And the Senior Medicare Patrol, which, which we use the acronym SMP, uh, this will educate our Brooklynites on how to detect and protect themselves from potential Medicare or Medicaid abuse, errors or fraud through pr presentations and information materials. And the material we're going to be giving out will be translated into a number of language, languages, including Chinese, Haitian Creole, Russian, Spanish, to ensure that we have such a wide reach of individuals who will learn about how to prevent and detect this fraud. And it's important that we have community engagement in the process, and the community engagement effort would include outreach to civic organization, healthcare facilities, houses of worship, senior centers, other local groups and entities, so we're all on board with this patrol that we're going to do. And that we believe that there's simple steps that we can do, and it's important to get those simple, simple steps out to the residents and those who can identify what these problems are. And those steps can include telling people uh, not to share or confirm your Medicaid or Social Security number with anyone who contacts you by phone. Oftentimes, my mother, who's a senior, uh, is often called, and people are trying to regain or retain her information and it's amazing that the people who are calling their seniors, our seniors, they are extremely sophisticated. They know how to get you comfortable and retrieve information. And as often as I tell her she shouldn't do it, from time to time I find that she makes that mistake. And we want to just continually to reinforce uh, our seniors who are receiving these calls and these targets uh, not to be a victim of this fraud. Medicare will never contact you unless you ask them to, to ask for your Medicare number or other personal information or to send you a new card. Medicare already has your information, so there's no reason for them to ask you for additional information. That is so important to get to our seniors. And also, uh, oftentimes our seniors are charged for new cards, and the, it's important to let our seniors know that there is no charge for a new card. We want to have people review their Medicare summary notice to be sure you and your Medicare are only being charged for actual items. It's when you look at the bill, sometimes we get the bill in, we just sort of rubber stamp it mentally, but we want to really educate our seniors to look at the bill to see are you actually being charged for the services that were rendered. Uh, we want to make sure that you have, seniors have not received a new Medicare card, and they can call the state Medicare patrol number that our, my staff and our team here will make that information readily available. So for over 40 years, the Office of the Borough President's Office has coordinated with the Borough-wide Interagency Council of Aging, and the 17 interagency councils for the aging to improve the lives of seniors across the borough. We want to continue to do that. And this campaign is a continuation of this partnership and how we support our seniors throughout the borough. Uh, we want Brooklyn to be the, really the epicenter of identifying fraud. If we turn around the numbers in Brooklyn, we will see those numbers turn around throughout the city and it would have a cascading effect of sending a loud and clear message that this is not a safe haven for fraudulent behavior, and that's the message that we want to send. At least one out of every eight residents of the borough is 65 years or older. One out of every eight. 
You know, this is the capital of senior living, and we want to make sure that it is safe. That's a significant portion of the population, and it continues to grow. One thing we all have in common, we're all going to get older, no matter who we are. <laughs> Seniors are oftentimes lacking access, access to critical public services that are otherwise available to the rest of their communities because of lack of awareness, and we want to change that. We will ensure that Brooklyn is a place that makes it easy for older adults to stay connected to people who are important to them, providing support to help and stay healthy, active, in, in age in place. It's crucial that the years that you spend here in the borough, you continue to be able to do so in age in, in place. An age-friendly Brooklyn will enable our older residents to have a better quality of life, be actively participating in community activities and cultural programs. It is important to us uh, that we combat fraud on every level, and that's why this initiative is so important. And we want to continue to ensure that you are informed. And lastly, it's crucial that as we move towards 2020, we want this community and throughout the entire borough to participate in the census. A census is so important. Brooklyn rated last in the last census count. We want to turn that around and make sure that every resident is counted. It doesn't matter if you are documented or undocumented, your numbers count. Those numbers are important for the resources that come to the borough and ensure that we get a proper count. So we're, we're doing Make Every Brooklyn Count initiative, and we want to have you as a partner on ensuring that everyone is counted in the borough of Brooklyn so we can receive our fair share of resources that come on the federal level. So thank you for coming out today. We want to thank our partners uh, for this important initiative. Brooklyn cannot be the poster child of Medicaid, Medicare fraud. We must be the symbol of how Medicaid and Medicare should be properly used, that we can have a strong and healthy health care us healthcare industry so that we can have a strong and healthy Brooklyn and a strong and healthy Brooklynites. And it starts by having a significant initiative like this. I cannot thank you enough and all of our partners. Thank you again. So thank you very much, Borough President Adams. Um, we, have an, we have what we call the A-team of government and law enforcement in this room today. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, so the next person I would like you to hear from, and the reason why they're all here is because it's very important. Brooklyn is the, has the highest amount of seniors, as the borough president said, and so we need to make sure that all of the services and protections come here um, first. So um, the next person I'm going to introduce is um, Kathleen Adi who is the Regional Administrator for the U.S. Administration of Community Living. In this capacity, she represents the Administration and the Assistant Secretary of, on Aging on all matters related to the implementation of the Older Americans Act and other aging-related issues within the eight states and two territories that she oversees. So she's a very, very busy woman, and we are so happy that she made the time to come out and uh, say hello to us. So, Thanks. Kathleen. Well, hello, everybody. It's just such an honor to be here, and I thank you so much for your time today. And on behalf of our Assistant Secretary on Aging, which is Mr. Lance uh, Robertson from um, Oklahoma. Uh, he extends his greetings to you, and I'm so glad that you're here. I also just want to take the opportunity to thank you for your initiatives in the age-friendly movement. New York, and especially Brooklyn, is setting the stage that many other states are looking at. So again, you've just been such a pioneer in so many areas, and I'm so pleased to be here today. So we represent people over the age of 60 at the Administration for Community Living. And 60, many times will be say, people will say, oh, is that really an older American? Yes, it is, according to the Older Americans Act. 
And how we work is we work with our other federal partners, such as CMS, on your behalf so that we can ensure that we protect the rights of older Americans and that we can support consumer control. This is very important that seniors have a voice and take control of things that are most important to them, and that's what we're here to do as a federal agency. We also encourage people to live in the community. And any time that we do such things of making sure that services are available to people in the community, we know that fraud is right behind us. So we really want to make sure that we're sharing information with you today so that you can combat that. We do lose billions of dollars annually. We know that. And again, it's been pointed out by our borough president that then this is a very, very big problem that's concerning all of us. You know, one of the things about the Senior Medicare Patrol Program that the borough president mentioned is that it is based upon volunteers, people who strongly care about older adults and making sure that they are protected and safe. Recruited volunteers are people who are older, maybe have retired, maybe have an interest in some of the health care policies and understanding the programs. So the Senior Medicare Program is definitely that is, which is homegrown and certainly local, so that people are representing you and educating you in your communities. We train volunteers. They have a program that they go through, they understand health care policies, and they certainly understand scams. They keep abreast of things that are happening in the community, and they share information broadly. Knowledge is power when it relates to scams. We have to be able to understand that and communicate when scams are in our area, that people know that, that they advise people, friends, family, loved ones to be cautious, and that heightens awareness which is exactly what we hope to accomplish. I think another important thing about the SMP program is it truly helps to minimize the fear. Older people are many times targeted because this particular population is typically very caring and very trusting. The seniors of today do not look the same as the seniors of yesteryear, and they truly take control of their lives. They do have a voice that is strong, and the SMP program truly underscores that. Again, we know that there's an economic uh, challenge when we talk about Medicare fraud, and you're going to hear a little bit about that. But what the SMP program does through educational sessions, through one-on-one -on -one visits with older Americans, with events such as what we're experiencing today, sharing information and providing some of the handouts, we really can combat this. In two, 2018, our central office in Washington, D.C. said, throughout the nation, the two major things that were the most frequent types of fraud were that of durable medical equipment, uh, where people were getting braces and things, not by the order of their doctor, but calling Medicare and obtaining braces and so forth, and also um, uh, inefficient um, billing practices, sometimes fraudulent, sometimes just by error. These things add up. Also, the other thing that was prevalent is identity scams. You know, people accidentally giving their phone, their um, Medicare number away, and all of a sudden you've got uh, people who are calling you and, and scamming. So again, these are the things that we're focusing on under the SMP program. I really want to just stop and just share with you a, a, a personal experience I had. It's a very brief story, but I think it illustrates what I'm trying to share with you. Sometimes Medicare, um, Medicare errors can occur from the, from the physician or from an office. I happen to know a wonderful Medicare, um, an SMP volunteer from the state of Pennsylvania. She actually went with her husband to the doctor's office. He was there to get his toenails clipped. She went with him. She did not go in with him, but he came out and said, yes, you know, my toenails were clipped. Everything is fine. She was smart enough, being an SMP trained volunteer, she went home and soon the remittance advice came. She looked in that and would you believe it, the toenail clipping turned into surgery. She saw that on the invoice. So she called the doctor's office, pointed that out, and they immediately fixed it. However, that could happen by error or it could be a fraudulent thing. So we have to be aware as consumers. So I, I'm so honored to be with you today. I thank you so much for giving this importance. I want to leave you with some key messages that you're going to hear over and over again, but it's certainly very, very important. Protect your Medicare card. Protect that card. Medicare will never call you unless you have initiated some correspondence. Please protect your card. 
detect, read that summary just like my friend did so that she could identify when there were things that were not appropriate, either by error or perhaps even by fraud. And of course, report. You know, your SMP volunteers are there for you. We have information that's provided over on the table. Uh, I'll conclude my comments by saying this is really an important problem. It does affect older people. We really want to make sure we protect and give the power back to the people to make a difference. So I thank you for your interest and I hope you share the word. Thank you so much. Thank you, Kathleen. Um, so like I said, we have very important people in this audience. I just wanted to, uh, to point out two people who are not up here but are, are, are here to support us. One is uh, Charles Clarkson from New Jersey, the New Jersey SMP. This program is on a federal level. So he came all the way from New Jersey to support our, our, initi our, initi our initiative. Um, and then also uh, Ms. Amy Hitler fr held from um, the Office of Attorney General um, from Manhattan. So she came also here to support us. So. Um, now I would like to invite uh, Diane McDaniel Jackson from the uh, from the High Cap um, program from the Department for the Aging, who's here to represent um, uh, Commissioner Resnick. Thank you. Good morning, everyone, and uh, morning. thank you for having me. Um, thank you very much, Maria, for uh, your introduction. I am, my name is Diane McDaniel Jackson and I'm the director of the New York City Department for the Aging Health Insurance Information Counseling and Assistance Program. The short name for that long name is HICAP. <laughs> my department knows firsthand the consequences that Medicare and Medicaid fraud have had on the lives of older New Yorkers. Thank you Brooklyn Borough President Eric Adams and all the partners that are here today for your dedication to this awareness campaign around such an important issue. As you may know, the Department for the Aging's uh, high cap unit, which is the unit that I'm from, is a source of free, accurate, and impartial information about health care coverage for older New Yorkers. High cap counselors assist older adults and questions with enrollment information throughout the five boroughs over the phone, in person, or if you have limited um, mobility, we can also do that over the telephone. We have seen how useful and necessary our services are for the city's seniors. During last year's open enrollment period, our high cap team held over 200 outreach and education events throughout the city, and we assisted more than 4,000 seniors navigating them through their choices of Medicare plans. Because of the increasing demand, our program expanded the number of volunteers who conduct Medicare presentations at our senior centers. We increased our utilization of off-site counselors. We improved our capability to serve non-English speaking communities using the language line provided by the Department for the Aging, and we have recruited more bilingual counselors. Often our counselors receive questions not only about Medicare, but also about Medicare fraud. Older adults can be especially vulnerable to fraud, extortion, and financial crimes. And with the help of our Elderly Crimes Victims Resource Center, our team is very equipped to handle those questions. Certainly being aware of the prevalence of financial elder abuse and what it can, can consist of helps us help avoid that with seniors. Awareness events like this in the presence of our older and new, older New Yorkers who, have, who are potential victims are so important in helping mitigate these crimes together. We thank you again for having the Department for the Aging and on behalf of all, we are proud to support the prevention of Medicare fraud in such a dedicated cause. Thank you again. Thank you. Okay, so um, as we mentioned, there are many campaigns that are happening towards preventing um, 
health care fraud, Medicare and Medicaid fraud. So, and, and this is important for you to know because what we're looking for is people to call our 800 number. You will see on your, on your seats there's a, uh, a, 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 um, a postcard, a large postcard. Um, it's in Russian. We have them in Russian and in English. And um, if you see any fraud, you call that number. And we have counselors that can assist you. We also have language access lines so that if you don't feel that you wanted to speak in English as comfortably, you could speak in any language and we're able to, to help with, 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 your, uh, with whatever questions you may have. So um, I wanted to ask uh, Sam Howard from CMS who is going to tell us a little bit about the Medicare card campaign. Uh, good morning. Uh, thank you uh, to Borough President Adams and uh, everyone for organizing this uh, outstanding event. Uh, my name is uh, Sam Howard. I work for the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services um, in the New York Regional Office in uh, Manhattan. And we oversee, um, we run the Medicare program, basically. Um, we're uh, in the process of wrapping up, actually, a very important initiative, um, which has been to remove social security numbers from Medicare cards and to replace them with an identifier that doesn't, um, that doesn't give away as much personal information. So as you know, there was, there's, been, there's a lot of um, identity theft and fraud around social security numbers. Um, so we've taken the social security number off of the Medicare card and replaced it with a uh, Medicare beneficiary identifier um, that doesn't link to the social security number and that can be replaced if it gets compromised. Um, so we've uh, completed the project of sending new Medicare cards to uh, everyone whose address we have. Um, unfortunately, not everybody keeps their address up to date with Medicare, so some people haven't received new cards um, as a result. So if you or someone you know hasn't received a new Medicare card, um, you can still use your old one through the end of uh, this year, um, but we'd ask that you contact Social Security. Their phone number is 1-800-772-1213, and they can, um, they, you can update your address and you can get a new uh, Medicare card, um, or you can actually uh, request a new Medicare card online by going to the Social Security, uh, socialsecurity.gov website. Yes, the telephone number is 800-772-1213. Um, and um, so uh, unfortunately, some uh, fraudsters have taken the new Medicare card replacement as a chance to try and um, scam people. So um, you don't have to do anything. If you already have Medicare, you don't have to do anything. You don't have to pay to get a new Medicare card. Um, you'll be sent one for free, and you should only talk to Social Security or to Medicare on your own initiative. If somebody calls you and says, we're trying to send you a new Medicare card or we're trying to confirm your information so we can send you a new Medicare card, uh, don't believe them. Um, so you've heard about the importance of protecting your Medicare card. You should protect this new number um, just like you would your Social Security number. Um, so that uh, it, it doesn't become compromised and that people can't use it for uh, fraudulent uh, billing. Um, so that's, that's uh, most of what I have to say. Um, in the New York Regional Office, we help people with um, Medicare issues that can't be resolved by calling 1-800-MEDICARE um, or for, through other issues. So if anybody here um, has current Medicare problems, I'm happy to talk to people uh, afterwards about their questions or concerns about the Medicare program. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so um, the next speaker is um, somebody who, her name is Jean Stone. She's the former director of the Northeastern Program Integrity Field Office at CMS. Um, Jean Stone is retired in July 2017 from CMS after 46 and a half years. Her Medicare and Medicaid and fraud activities included conducting and leading local and national on-site investigations of providers like a seven-state uh, stopgap plan which revoked 490 suppliers, 
Medicare and Medicaid payments and enrollments that denied $36 million in claims, identified more than $69 million in overpayments, and opened 1,240 new investigations and referred 28 cases to law enforcement for more than $51.9 million in Medicare billing. So we are very, very happy and lucky that after her retirement, she wanted to continue informing the, the, uh, the community. So we said, absolutely, she should be a volunteer with us. So, <laughs> so please welcome Jean Stone. Good morning. Thanks, Maria. Thank you, Brooklyn Borough President Davis. You get around. I last met you at Brooklyn Fashion Week, so this gentleman is, it, he is Mr. Brooklyn. I'm here today, um, and all of these wonderful accomplishments that Maria talked about are the result of a team. And the team is our, our Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services, our Program Safeguard Contractors, or Unified Program Integrity Contractors, and law enforcement, you know, Office of Inspector General, Department of Justice, um, the Attorney General's Office in Medicaid, the Medicaid Fraud Control Unit, um, and Senior Medicare Patrol. We work as a team. I'm here now, people have told you what the problems are. I'm here to give some practical advice what you as a senior or as a caregiver or as a family member can do to protect the Medicare patient's identity their health insurance information, and to protect the Medicare trust fund, because Medicare services are funded through a trust fund. When you pay into your, your Social Security taxes and your Medicare taxes, that's the trust fund that pays for health care. When it's defrauded, that money in the bank, the trust fund, drops. Okay, we're getting more and more seniors, and the amount of money is dropping, so we're gonna hit a crunch. We need to protect the money we have. So, the first thing we ask seniors to do is check their Medicare summary notice. There's a nice handout that talks about, from Senior Medicare Patrol, about what it is. It comes every 90 days. It's like a credit card statement. It says everything that Medicare was billed for that patient in that last 90 days and whether Medicare paid it or denied it or reduced it, and what the patient's liability is, okay? So please review it. If there's a service that the patient, you or your, your family member didn't get, please report it, because those complaints are tracked. So if we get a second complaint in and you look and you see, ooh, Dr. Jean Stone, this is the second complaint, you kind of go, okay. If it's Dr. Jean Stone and it's a 2,000th complaint, somebody's gonna really start looking at Jean Stone's medical records and her billing and things. So complaints information helps us track. It's data that's very useful. Um, there is no free lunch. If someone offers you or your family member money or a trip to Florida or something of value, in return for receiving a Medicare or Medicaid service or using a particular provider or pharmacy, don't do it. It's illegal, okay? It's illegal to offer anything of value. And value means something more than a coffee mug, okay? Coffee mugs, you know, refrigerator magnets, those are considered nominal value. But someone taking you out to a lavish dinner, someone sending you on a trip, someone paying you money, um, someone giving you clothing, jewelry, that's illegal, okay? Um, there are no deadlines. A lot of the marketers use scare tactics. If you don't act now, you're going to lose out. You're not gonna lose anything. There are no deadlines other than open enrollment when a, an individual can change or join a Medicare Advantage plan or a prescription drug plan. Okay, that's it. We're not running out of services, but they use that scare tactic. 
my personal advice is don't make healthcare decisions based on late night TV ads <laughs> or telemarketers. Telemarketers are, they call and they're your best friend. Since I retired, our home phone, the only calls we get are telemarketing bogus calls. And every once in a while, to mess with them, I will answer my phone. Okay. If you need a knee brace, go to your doctor. Talk to your doctor. Because a knee brace might be the absolute worst thing for your knee. Immobilizing it might be the worst thing. You're going to lose mobility rather than you know, stop pain. You might need stre to stretch. You might need physical therapy. You might need a medication. You know, it might be some, it might need surgery. Okay, but just getting that knee brace is not the solution. If you need one, your doctor can order it, and then your doctor can check and see if it's working as it should. Okay. Um, the telemarketing scams. Medicare prohibits our Medicare Advantage plans and prescription drug plans and durable medical equipment suppliers from direct cold calling you. Okay? Durable medical equipment are things like wheelchairs, walkers, hospital beds, knee braces, medical equipment that's useful in a home. Okay? Telemarketers are calling, giving you the hard sell. Okay? Go to your doctor. Your doctor can order what it is you need. They can, their doctor can tell you how often you have to use it, how to use it, um, if you need insulin, if you need um, a glucometer for testing your insulin and your blood um, uh, sugar levels. Go to your doctor. Don't base, do something based on someone showing up at your front door or calling you on the telephone. Telemarketers cannot cold call you. So they're changing some of their scripts now. The, one, the call now I get is, this is not a sales call. This is in response to your request for information. I made no such request. But they say that so that they think they're covering themselves. Please don't fall for it. Hang up the phone. We tell seniors to have an excuse ready. If someone shows up at your door, please do not let them in if they do not have an appointment. If you didn't invite them, do not let them in. If you have a back door, make sure it's locked because some of the scammers come to the front door, keep you occupied, and their partner comes in the back door and steals the purse from the, you know, from the coffee, from the dining table or the kitchen table or they go upstairs to your bedroom and steal jewelry, computers, cell phones. If someone comes to your house and asks to use your bathroom, make sure you have a locked medicine cabinet because that's a scam. They come in, they, they're coming to visit. Oh, okay, you know, we won't do the sales call, but I really need to use your bathroom. They're going fishing through your medicine cabinet to look for drugs that they can sell on the street. Protect yourselves, protect your family. Be smart, okay? Um, I talked about kickbacks. I talked about the telemarketing. I talked about door-to-door -door sales. Listen to, you know, there's a, there was a book called, you know, Listening to Yourself, you know, Blink, Trust Your Gut. If it feels wrong, trust your gut. We tell seniors to have an excuse ready. You know, some seniors are very um, polite, they don't want to say no, they don't want to throw somebody out of their house. Come up with your excuse. I have food, uh, something in the oven. I have my teapot on the stove. I'm expecting a call from my family member in Europe. You know, come up with whatever it is that's a polite way to say no and just close the door. <laughs> if you see something, say something. Thank you. Thank you, Jean. That was very, very important and uh, good tips for, for people for, to do every day. Okay, so the next person I'm going to invite to come up is uh, Mr. Matt Kachansky. He's the program director of the Safeguard Services. 
um, which is the, oh, there you are, <laughs> which works with the, the Center for Medicare Medicaid Services in investigating all of these cases. Good morning, everyone. Uh, thank you, Maria. Thank you for the invitation. Uh, this is a very important uh, topic and a very important uh, uh, way to communicate this to everybody because Medicare and Medicaid fraud is a huge problem that is just expanding greatly every day. I've been doing this type of work for over 30 years, uh, almost as much as Gene, but not, not quite there yet. Uh, and we see the same types of fraud every day, just with new wrinkles to it. You know, Gene talked about the durable medical equipment fraud. You see it 20 years ago, it was wheelchairs, and then it was hospital beds and seat lift chairs. Now it's equipment. Uh, I'm going to talk a little bit more about that in a minute. I just want to give a little bit of background on what my job is and what our, my company does. We are I'm the program director of the of Safeguard Services Unified Program Integrity Contractor. That's a contractor for CMS where our job is to identify, investigate, and resolve allegations of fraud, waste, and abuse against the Medicare and Medicaid program. Uh, for us, it's from, our jurisdiction is from Maine to Washington, D.C. But I can tell you that probably half or more of our cases are right here in New York, and most of those are in Brooklyn. Uh, I can give you some stats of that in a minute, but what we do is we have investigators, data analysts, clinicians, nurses, uh, intelligence analysts uh, throughout the jurisdiction, and we take a look at billing data from Medicare and Medicaid. We analyze that data, we find aberrances in that data, we look for spikes, we look for things that just don't make any medical sense, and from those types of leads, we then open investigations. We go out, we talk to providers, we talk to beneficiaries, we go to the offices, we look at the medical records, we have clinicians on staff that take a look at the medical records to see if there's anything in those records that show what was actually conducted versus what was billed, or if if there was poor quality of care given. Uh, that's a huge, hugely impactful focus of our job is whether the quality of care was given. And what we do with those cases is based on the facts, based on what we find, we try to resolve those cases. We either work with CMS to take administrative action against providers, whether that be collecting an overpayment or throwing them out of the program uh, and if it reaches the level that we believe there's potential fraud, then we work with the Office of Inspector General to refer those cases to them to take to the next level, which would be criminal or civil prosecution of those providers. Uh, so we work, we are part of that team that Gene referenced, where we're sort of in the middle. We, we work it from the beginning, and we get it to the right entity to try to resolve it. But I can tell you, the most important member of the team are the beneficiaries. You are the first line of defense against Medicare and Medicaid fraud. I talked about our data analysts and our intelligence analysts that do all of that data, data mining. By the time it comes to our attention through those means, hundreds of thousands, if not millions of dollars, have already gone out the door. We need the beneficiaries to come forward quickly so we can identify those things quickly before it reaches that point. Without that, it is very difficult, and, and Joe can come up and talk about it a little bit, it's very difficult to get the money back. If we can stop it before it goes out the door, it's much more an effective program integrity effort. So with that, I'm going to probably reiterate a little bit of what Gene talked about, but what can a beneficiary do in the effort? It's to, it's to go into something with the, with the mindset of, if it's too good to be true, it probably is. So if someone calls you, or there's an ad in the, pay, in, the, in, the, in a flyer in your apartment complex, or an ad on TV that talks about free medical equipment, free, you need, or if you need a knee brace, call this number and it's free to you, 
Well, it's, A, it's not free, as Gene talked about. It comes from that trust fund where you're all contributing to it. And when you get that knee brace, you might not just get that knee brace. You might get a back brace, an elbow brace, a wrist brace, a neck brace, everything that you don't need. You're going to get those things as well because what you've done in answering that ad or in taking that telephone call is you've given them your Medicare number. And now it's out there. And there's going to be other companies that are going to get it, and they're going to be using it as well. And that knee brace that you needed is going to be exploded into tens of thousands of dollars of equipment that you don't need, that you may get or may not get, but, you, but it might be just sitting in the corner of your house. And then your efforts are going to be trying to get that equipment back because it's just taking up space, and then the company's not going to be responsive. They're not going to, they're not going to return your calls. They're not going to come pick the stuff up. It's just going to sit there. Other things you might want to look for, if you go to a health fair and they're offering free screenings, free tests, same thing. They're not free. They're probably not necessary. They're probably not covered. And what you're doing is giving them your Medicare number and they're going to maybe run those tests, but what Medicare gets billed for are batteries of tests that you didn't get. It happens so frequently and routinely, it's, it's amazing the amount of money that goes out for these types of efforts. So just be very careful of those things. And if you've seen those types of efforts, you know, reach out to the SMP, call that hotline, tell them that these things are going on, because then our entity, the OIG, can then get involved and try to stop those things before they get to the level of, you know, tens of millions of dollars going out the door. Gene talked about kickbacks. If a provider offers you money or a gift in exchange for them, uh, you allowing them to provide you Medicare ser medical services, that's a crime. That's a crime on their part and, frankly, a crime on your part for accepting it. Not that anybody would be in the process of you know, prosecuting beneficiaries, but it is a crime for them to, to, ex to, to offer those bribes to you. Gene talked about the summary notices. You can't, I can't emphasize enough the importance of reviewing those summary notices that you get. There are, one thing we've seen in my 30 years is if something is new to Medicare, there's a new process, a new piece of equipment, a new test, that the program integrity side of it hasn't caught up with the technology, that's where providers take advantage. Lately, it's been with screening tests for uh, brain scans, uh, neurotransmitters and things like that where they're not covered yet by Medicare but they are new technology the providers will provide these things uh, a needle behind your ear for electronic acupuncture that's not covered but they bill it as if it's a service that is case in point these electronic acupuncture your summary notice will show you that they billed for a six thousand dollar surgery but all they've done is put a pinprick behind your ear. If you see things like that that don't make sense, that you don't remember getting, that's something that needs to be brought to the SMP's attention right away. I talked a little bit about Brooklyn. In the past five years, we've had 380 cases in Brooklyn, and many of them right here in the Brighton Beach area. For us, that resulted in $26.1 million in overpayments that we tried to recover from the providers, 31 law enforcement referrals to the OIG, 26 suspensions of payments from providers where we've stopped them from, allow from paying them, and 321 revocations or deactivations of provider numbers of providers trying to take advantage of the beneficiaries in the program right here in Brooklyn. That's just over the past five years. That's a large percentage of the work that we've done is right here. A couple of examples. Uh, I don't know if I'm stealing your thunder here, uh, Joe, but uh, a Brooklyn surgeon was just sentenced to 14 years in jail and ordered to pay restitution of $14 million for uh, billing for surgeries that, they, that he wasn't conducting. This was a case we referred to the OIG based apart on data and based in large part by the beneficiaries that came forward to tell us we didn't get these surgeries. You know, we, he was, did the initial surgery, but then there's thousands and thousands of dollars of follow-up surgeries that he never conducted. And he just finally got sentenced to 14 years in jail. 
in terms of tests and screenings, we just uh, revoked two mobile testing labs for billing for medical tests, whether they be echocardiograms, sonograms, allergy testing, that either weren't done, were never ordered by the physicians that were listed as the ordering physician, or just were not medically necessary. For those, just those two labs, it was over a million dollars in restitution, and they were both revoked from the Medicare program. And those were both Brooklyn-based companies. So the bottom line, you know, we as the UPIC, you know, we are, you know, we are a partner in this program integrity effort. You know, our cases end up either with law enforcement or working with CMS to resolve them. To do our job, we have our data teams, our investigators, our medical review analysts, but we can't do it without the beneficiaries. Our efforts would be constantly just chasing money as it goes out the door without beneficiaries coming forward and helping us. So what can you do? Call the SMP hotline. If something doesn't seem right, if something just seems too good to be true, there's a good chance it is. And the SMP hotline will help you get those resolved. We'll answer your questions and get it to the right entity, whether that be the OIG, whether that be us, whether that be CMS or one of their administrative contractors. They'll get it to the right area where it can be resolved. Thank you. Thank you for that excellent presentation. It puts it's so now you see all the, the chain of command that goes on when when we report when something uh, a problem. So our our final speaker um, wraps up the entire process of, of what we're talking. Um, Joseph Franco, who's the special agent from the Health and Human Services Office of Inspector General, um, has been has a long career in law enforcement, has been with HHS for, for the OIG for six months, and before that he was with the Secret Service. So um, please welcome Joseph Franco. They, uh, they save the most handsome devils for last. <laughs> um, <laughs> so I'm with uh, Health and Human Services, the Office of the Inspector General, and uh, kind of what's that? That's the, uh, the law enforcement arm that brings all of this home. And the idea behind that is uh, we mitigate and try and investigate fraud, waste, and abuse. Uh, and we accomplish that mission with everyone you've seen here today on the federal level, the state level, and the local level, and even more personally, all of, our, uh, all of you, the citizens who, who accept the, uh, the benefits of this system. Um, so I guess what I want to say is kind of like, why, why should you care right, about why fraud, waste, and abuse occurs? The best reason is like you've been lucky enough to become seniors and hopefully everyone you love will be lucky enough to become a senior and you want the viability of a system like this to exist you know, in, in, in time coming. Right? And if you allow fraud, waste, and abuse to occur, then when it comes time to start cutting you know, funds to certain programs, you don't want this to be one of the programs that takes that hit. Right? You want this to be here for, for your children and their children and uh, be part of the American life forever. Um, even more personally, I think it's important to understand that like, even the Medicare system and Medicaid system has, has limits. So if you allow fraud to occur, or, or your identity was stolen, and you don't take the time to check that summary statement, you might be being charged for, or Medicaid is being charged for services that you didn't ask for, and they might have a, a, a cap Right, so if you needed it in the future, and someone's already been fraudulently charging for it, you're, you're no longer given access to that, to that particular service. So if you only have four various psychological exams, or you pick, and then you really need it, it could be gone. Someone could have already billed you for it. Or even more frightening would be the case that you were in an emergency situation, and you couldn't speak for yourself, and a doctor had to make a decision on a medication to give you. They look into your medical record, and you've been billed for a medication that you never really pay, you never really took, but they make a decision about your health in a in a dire situation with the wrong information. Right? You don't want a doctor to have to make that decision with with fraudulent information. That's an important reason to, to take this seriously. Um, so, just in closing, you guys are the front line. To echo that sentiment again and again. 
if you check that summary and something doesn't make sense, you don't remember anything, it's no trouble to call us, to call any of our partners. Don't be, don't be shy. You can call us at uh, 1-800-HHS-TIPS. It's, uh, it's on the back of this pamphlet. It's up there on that little table if you guys want to grab one on the way out. That's 1-800-HHS-TIPS. You could call CMS. You call any of these uh, organizations that have been up here today, and they'll be glad to help you and steer you in the right direction. Um, thank you very much for your time, and I hope you guys have a good day. So before we go, I just wanted to do something. I wanted to, we're talking about teamwork. I wanted to talk about our team that, that we work with. We have uh, Joan Akpan, who's right here. <laughs> Leslie Sierra, who's our, our counselor, and she comes out and makes presentations. <laughs> Joe Carace, who is a member of this community. And, um, Certainly, we couldn't have done anything without Boris Brook, who organized everything, and Susan, and Nan Blackshear, and the, and the uh, staff from the borough president's office. I want to recognize everybody, because this was a very big effort to, to put together, and, and we did it successfully. Um, are there any questions for the borough president? Or, um, and I know there's some press here, if they wanted to ask any questions. Um, okay, so if you have any questions, we'll do it after it closes down, and I wanted to, um, yeah, so there will be a question, and um, thank you very much, and um, if you have any questions, you can ask us, and if you would like to, um, to sign up as volunteers for this program, let us know. Thank you. Good job. Good job. Oh, good. Thank you so much. Forever. So just let me know whatever else we can do.